वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन वीडियो लेक्चर क्लास ऑफ मेडिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री हेयर एंड प्रेजेंटर डॉक्टर सुबीर कुमार मंडल एसिसटेंट प्रोफेसर बायोकेमिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट आदिनाकिज मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल खुलना बांग्लादेश टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ मेडिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री पार्ट 3 व्हिच इज मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट फॉर बायोमेडिकल एग्जाम फॉर एवरी स्टूडेंट्स इन मेडिकल सेक्टर और अदर सेक्टर which is biological oxidation it's most complicated and most important topic and most commonest topic within examiner and examinees so we are waiting for let's begin the main session at first we have to know what is oxidation and what is reduction reactions these two important reactions belongs to the whole chemical reaction which is commonly called biological oxidation biological oxidation is a broad term which includes this oxidation and reduction reaction and this is the basic reaction in medical biochemistry and this is the basic reaction also in humans or all living beings in the world so at first we have to know what is oxidation oxidation is the basic chemical process by which electrons are removed from the biomolecules and reduction is the process by which another biomolecules will receive the loses electrons or means which accept electrons so oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons this is most basic term in viber examination so Biological oxidation also includes the most important thing, which is electron transport chain, or in other terms, which is called respiratory chain, the most important chain in living organism. Without it, we can't live, because this is the main stream for our living beings. So the electron lost in the oxidation is accepted by an acceptor, who is said to be reduced. Such as oxidation of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide hydrogen to nicotinamide adenine electrons or only nab means nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide hydrogen is the reduced form of nad and nad is the oxidized form another example is flavin mononucleotide it's also oxidized form and fmn h2 or fmn flavin mononucleotide 2 hydrogen it's also reduced form so what is the definition of biological oxidation it's most important in written exam biological oxidation is the oxidation or chemical reactions which is occur in all living organisms is the oxidation of biomolecules in biological system under the influences of several types of enzymes we oh, know several types of enzymes at all because previously we studied different types of enzymes oxidoreductases so we have to know what are the important enzymes which are closely involved in this biological oxidation dehydrogenases oxidases peroxidases catalases oxygenases and several types of coenzymes uh, vitamin b complex coenzymes also directly involve this biological oxidation there is also three basic chemical reaction So, what are the basic chemical reactions that are involved directly in biological oxidation? Previously, we know two reactions, which is oxidation and reduction. Here is new one, which is called oxygenation. So, what is oxygenation? Oxy plus genation means here oxygen will be added. so that's why it's called oxygenation generation of oxygen oxygenation oxidation and reduction these are the basic three chemical reactions which are directly involved with the biological oxidation another important topic in biological oxidation which is called high energy phosphate compounds most important of it because without these compounds our body can generate sufficient amount of energy the energy forms in our body which is called adenosine triphosphate atp the powerhouse of all living cells without atp we can survive so what is high energy phosphate compounds high energy phosphate compounds are the chemical compounds or strong compounds which produce maximum amount abundant amount of energy in our living cells how much 
7 calories per mole and in which pH? Obviously in neutral pH, pH 7.0. So what are the high energy phosphate compounds? Most important topic always asked in every, every in by by exam ever, ever, ever. Phosphenol pyruvate, carbamoyl phosphate, cyclic, adenosine monophosphate 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, acetyl CoA, most importantly, adenosine triphosphate, obviously, and pyrophosphate are the most commonest forms of high energy phosphate compounds. Now, what are the low energy phosphate compounds? This is the opposite of high energy phosphate compounds. So, low energy phosphate compounds are the chemical compounds which produce less amount of energy, less than 7 calorie per mole. So, what are the examples? Adenosine diphosphate, most importantly, adenosine diphosphate is the commonest low energy phosphate compounds. Next one, glucose 1 phosphate, glucose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 1 6 dix phosphate etc. Glycerol 3 phosphate also includes this low energy phosphate compounds. Now, turn to the chapter of bioenergetics and redox potential, which is the most important topic in the chapter. So, what is bioenergetics? This is the study. Obviously, this is a study of biochemical reaction changes inside our living organism. So, that's why it's, it's another term is biochemical thermodynamics. It always deals the several types of biochemical reaction changes inside our living cells. So what is the definition? Bioenergetics is the study of energy changes in biochemical reactions. There are two types of changes or two types of energy changes always involve this bioenergetics process. One is exergonic process and another one endergonic process. So first, what is exergonic and endergonic processes? The reactions are broadly classified exergonic means energy releasing. Energy will be released by these reactions and endergonic energy will be consumed by this process. Therefore, exergonic excretes the energy and endergonic endogenously engulfed or endogenously generation of energy. Exergonic energy and endergonic energy. Then the most important topic, free energy. Free energy is the available energy. That's why it's called free energy. It's the available energy to do work in every biochemical reactions. It's the energy that is available to do work. Which type of work? Helps in all types of biochemical reactions that are closely involved in living cells. Two types of free energy changes always developed in our body. One is negative free energy change, another is positive energy change. Negative energy change means exergonic change and positive free energy change means endergonic change because we already know what is what are exergonic and endergonic reactions. Free energy changes becomes zero when the biochemical reaction is in equilibrium condition. Then free energy changes will be zero. Now, what is redox potential? Most important topic, redox potential. So, redox potential means it is the oxidation and reduction reaction coupled this term of redox potential. So, we know oxidation means loses of electrons and reduction means gaining of or accepting of electrons. So what is the importance of this term of redox potential? Because previously I said respiratory chain, which is most important part in this chapter, these respiratory chain organizations depends on this the basic principle of redox potential. The more positive redox potential represents greater tendency to accept electrons, and the more negative redox potential represents to lose electrons. The electrons, previously I said the organization of respiratory chain. So, um, in this the organization of respiratory chain, this organization depends of, on a basic principle. So, what is the basic principle? Basic principle depends on the basic law of redox potential because 
all biomolecules will be organized from negative to more positive way in the respiratory chain. The electrons flow from a redox pair with more negative to another redox pair with more positive. Example, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide hydrogen, its redox potential is minus 0.32. And last one is cytochrome B as for example, plus 0.07 means respiratory chain will be organized from more negative to more positive way and this is the principle of redox potential that's why redox potential is more important electron transport chain is completely organized according to the principle of redox potential now turn to the most important electron transport chain what is electron transport chain in basic term this is the chain by which all electrons will be transported up to level fire electrons helps to form energy and water. So electron transport chain or respiratory chain is a series of electron transporters embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane that carries electrons from nicotinamide and dinucleotide reduced form of nicotinamide and dinucleotide hydrogen and FED2 is to molecular oxygen to form finally ATP and one molecule of water. Respiratory chain, that's so it's called because our cell can survive without respiration, means oxygenation or oxygen. That's why our cell always depends upon this respiratory chain. So, respiratory chain mainly responsible for cellular respiration without respiratory chain we can't survive our cell will be easily dead in this process protons are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space and oxygen will be reduced to form water what are the components there are several types of components basic components we have to know hydrogen carriers and electrons carriers so what are the hydrogen carriers. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, FED, flavin adenine dinucleotide, flavin mononucleotide and coenzyme Q. And what are the electron transporters? Cytochrome B, cytochrome C, cytochrome C1, cytochrome AA3. Of them, three molecules are freely diffusible. So what is there? Nicotinamide and nucleotide, cytochrome C and coenzyme Q are the free diffusible. That's why they don't need any carrier because they are freely diffusible. So, what are the complex of respiratory chain? There are basically four complex, but in some books, some authors prefer five types of complexes found in respiratory chain but we should say principally for complex found in electron transport chain complex one complex two complex three and complex four so complex one composed of flavin mononucleotide fmn complex two composed by flavin and nucleotide and associated coenzymes Complex 3 composed by cytochrome B and cytochrome C1 or final complex will be composed by cytochrome A, A3. There are two enzymes basically involved in respiratory chain. One is cytochrome oxidase and another one is ATP synthase. Cytochrome oxidase mainly responsible for producing water and ATP synthase may be responsible for generation of ATP by the process of oxidative phosphorylation, the most important biochemical reaction by which our body can easily produce or abundant amount of ATP by this process, oxidative phosphorylation. So, electron transporters have also blockers or there are some blocking agents that can inhibit or can block this respiratory chain. So what are the blockers? It's most important. So we have to know according to complex. At first, complex one, 
barbiturates. Barbiturates are the poison that can easily block respiratory region. We know the poison in cages. Poison in cages are really fatal for every individual or every living organism. So these barbiturate or toxic substance can easily block complex one respiratory chain. Now, complex two, malonate. These also drugs and toxic substance. Complex three, antimycin A, dimercaprol. Complex four, hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, and cyanide. We know carbon monoxide poisoning, cyanide poisoning. Cyanide is the most toxic and more fatalic poison that can easily kill any living organism within few minutes or seconds. So cyanide poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning can easily block complex four respiratory chain. That's all for today. Hope see you soon again with a new topic, new chapter. Till then, stay happy healthy stay at home thank you for patience sharing thank you bye bye